Sergeant Jared Palmer and his partner Zazu have been training. Well, the dog lives with you. The dog's your best friend. She's your partner. Mastering the skills of war. <laughs> sniffing out bombs and fending off attackers. Documents we've since obtained from the U.S. Air Force reveal 116 military dogs were killed in action in 2011 out of 2,500 deployed. 60 more euthanized, too injured, too sick, or simply too aggressive once their course of duty ended. Ron Aiello was a dog handler in Vietnam, but he says the military protects its animals better now. But he says not well enough. Aiello's built a warehouse in his backyard so he can stuff care packages to send to military dogs and their handlers overseas, sending chew toys, grooming tools, collars. If a handler needs a new harness, they have to fill out paperwork and it goes through the red tape and everything and maybe three months later they have a harness. But if they email me, I could have in the mail t this afternoon a harness. Other charities have established websites to help the military find families to adopt service dogs after war. Our recent investigation found a loophole in federal law makes it wildly expensive and bureaucratic for some would-be adopters to do so. And it's volunteers building memorials to service dogs. They're sprouting up nationwide, like this one in New Jersey. They've etched the name of the dog in the stone. In this case, a dog that was killed in Vietnam. This one died in action in Iraq. There's concern that no matter how hard the government may try, it's not doing enough to honor service canines. The Pentagon is now spending $7 million a year to care for, to train, and to breed the canines. And the training regimen at Lackland Air Force Base is as intense as ever, a years long process. An Air Force spokeswoman tells me once overseas, the canines are well supplied with food. Diets scientifically designed, she says, to keep the dogs at peak nutrition. But Aiello says he's overrun by emails from handlers asking for extra help. This is the military, this is the government. They, they never respond that quickly. In Washington, I'm Scott McFarland.